Section 8.2, testing a claim about a proportion. The objective here is to conduct a formal hypothesis test of a claim about a population proportion P. Notation that we'll use, N will be the sample size or the number of trials. P is the population proportion. P hat is a sample proportion and Q is one minus P. Requirements, the sample observations are a simple random sample. The conditions for a binomial distribution are satisfied. There's a fixed number of trials. The trials are independent. Each trial has two categories of success and failure and the probability of success remains the same in all the trials. The third requirement is that NP and NQ must be greater than or equal to five. The binomial distribution of the sample proportions can then be approximated by a normal distribution with mu equal to NP and sigma equal to the square root of NPQ. Notice the P that we use here is the P that's assumed value of the proportion in the claim, the, the value that's stated in the null hypothesis, not the sample proportion. And here's the Z statistic that we're gonna use for testing the claim about a proportion. We'll use StatCrunch and we're also going to use the p-value method. And the p-values will be automatically provided when we use StatCrunch. So let's return to our drone example that we worked with previously. 1,009 consumers were asked if they are comfortable with having drones deliver their purchases and 54% or 545 responded no. Use these results to test the claim that most consumers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries and we interpret most to mean more than half or greater than 50% or greater than 0.5. We'll test the requirements first. Remember there are three requirements. There are 1,009 randomly selected consumers. There's a fixed number of independent trials with two categories. The subject is either uncomfortable with drone deliveries or not. And then the requirement that NP and NQ are both greater than or equal to five are satisfied if we check and multiply 1009 times the P from the null hypothesis, which is 0.5, and we get a value of 504.5 for both NP and NQ, and they're both greater than or equal to five. So for the p-value method, first we want to say the original claim is that most consumers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries, and that can be expressed symbolically as p greater than 0.5. The opposite of that claim is P less than or equal to 0.5. And so therefore our hypotheses are going to be the null is going to be that P equals 0.5. And the alternative is going to be that P is greater than 0.5, which is the original claim. For the significance level, we're going to use alpha equal to 0.05. And because we're testing a claim about a population proportion P, the sample statistic P hat is what we will use and the sampling distribution, sorry, the sampling distribution of the sample proportions can be approximated by a normal distribution in this case. And again, we're going to use StatCrunch. So you're going to select stat, proportion stats, one sample with summary, enter the number of successes, which was calculated at 545 or provided at 545, the sample size, and then under uh, perform, you're going to enter the values for the null and the alternative, and we notice down there we put in that P for the null is equal to 0.5, and our alternative, we use that drop-down menu to specify greater than 0.5. And here's the output. And we notice here that the test statistic, the Z statistic, is 2.55, and the p-value is 0.0054. And this gives you a pictorial of what that looks like. And so we're far away from the middle of the distribution. We're more than two standard deviations away from where we hypothesize the mean of the distribution would be at 0.5. Because the p-value of 0.0054 is less than or equal to the significance level of 0.05, we reject the null. We can conclude there is sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that more than half of consumers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries. You try it. Consider a drug testing company that provides a test for marijuana. Among 265 tested subjects, results from 29 subjects were wrong, either a false positive or a false negative. Use a 0.1 significance level to test the claim that less than 10% of test results are wrong. Identify the null and alternative hypotheses for this test. So let's take a look at what we've got. We've got, um, the claim is that less than 10% of the study results, of the test results rather, are uh, wrong. So that's going to become our alternative. And then we know that our null is going to have an equal statement in it. So that limits us now to A, B, or D. 
and we notice here that we want to go, uh, the claim is less than 10%, so the correct answer is going to be D. Now we want to check our requirements. We have a random sample. We have a binomial distribution, so we want to check on the requirements for the binomial. There's a fixed number of trials. The subjects are independent of one another. Two outcomes, either the test is wrong or it's not wrong, and the probability of being wrong remains constant. And then we check our expected successes and expected failures. And again, we do that from the value specified in the null, and both of those are greater than or equal to five. Identify the test statistics. So we're going to use StatCrunch, and we're going to enter in the number of successes. And we had 29 subjects out of 265. And we're going to enter then in the perform window, we're going to put in the null hypothesis is p equal to 0.1, and then we use the drop down to specify the correct alternative and then hit compute. And here's our output. And so we see here that our sample proportion was about 11% and our z-score is about 0.51 and our p-value is 0.6956 and we were using an alpha level of 0.1. So what's our conclusion? Since our significance level is not less than 0.1, we're going to fail to reject and there's insufficient evidence to warrant support of the claim that less than 10% of the test results are wrong. How do you find the number of successes if you're only given the uh, point estimate for the proportion? So you need to remember the formula where you multiply the sample size times the point estimate in order to get the sample the number of successes. And we're going to do an example to demonstrate that. A study of sleepwalking or nocturnal wandering was described in Neurology Magazine, and it included information that 29.2% of 19,136 adults had sleepwalked. What is the actual number of adults who have sleepwalked? So what you're going to do is you're going to take 0.292 or 29.2% of the sample size of 19,136 and we come up with 5587.712, but we're talking about people, so we're going to round that off to 5588. And now we're going to go ahead and do this test here. So would a reporter be justified in stating that fewer than 30% of adults have sleepwalked? Let's use an 05 significance level to test the claim that for the adult population, the proportion of those who have sleepwalked is less than 0.3. So the requirement check. We have a simple random sample. We have a fixed number of independent trials with two outcomes. NP and NQ are both greater than or equal to 5. And so we're good to go. And so we want to, our original claim is it's less than 30%. So that's symbolic as point, uh, sorry, as P less than 0.3. The opposite of that is P greater than or equal to 0.3. And so our null and our alternative are going to be, the null is going to be P equal to 0.3. And our alternative, which is the claim, is that P is less than 0.3. And our significance level we're going to use is 0.05. And now we're going to go ahead and use technology with StatCrunch. And if you go to StatCrunch and put the information in, you'll come up with a Z statistic of negative 2.41 and a very small p-value, 0.008. Because the p-value is less than the stated significance level of 0.05, we reject the null. We support the alternative and therefore conclude there's sufficient evidence to support the claim that fewer than 30% of adults have sleepwalked. Do most people believe the Loch Ness Monster exists? This question was posted on the American online website, Do You Believe the Loch Ness Monster Exists? Among 21,346 responses, 64% were yes. Use a 0.01 level to test the claim that most people believe that the Loch Ness Monster exists. How is this conclusion affected by the fact that internet users who saw the question could decide whether to respond? First, we need to find the number of successes. So we need to find 64% of 21,346 and we're going to round that number off to 13,662. Requirement check. It's not a random sample. We notice that that's something we're concerned about. There is a fixed number of trials with two outcomes. Um, sample size requirement NP and NQ greater than or equal to 5 is met. So two of the three requirements are satisfied. We're going to put what we say proceed with caution. So the original claim symbolically is P greater than 0.5. And the opposite of that is P less than or equal to 0.5. So our null is going to be P equal to 0.5, and our alternative is going to be that P is the original claim. This should be greater than 0.5. Sorry, that should be greater than 0.5. Significance level is 0.01. And again, we're going to use StatCrunch here. And so we've got 
Here's our output here. Here's our test statistic at 40.92, and our p-value is very, very, very small. And so because our p-value of 0 0.0001 is less than or equal to the significance level of 0.01, we reject the null and we support the alternative. We therefore conclude there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that more than 50% of adults believe the Loch Ness Monster exists. And we could also calculate the 99% confidence interval. And if you notice here, it goes from about 63.2% up to 64.8%. And we notice that does not include the 50%. So therefore, that supports our claim that uh, it's greater than 50%. But we're still concerned the sample was a convenient sample and not a random sample.